I move that uh, the board enter executive session to discuss the ETA, SSO, and CSEA contracts, the proposed teacher early retirement incentive, and the employment history of a particular person. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. We're going we'll be right back. Mike. I move that the following consensus items be approved as listed in the administrative memorandum A through T. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, if anyone has anything to say uh, for the public comments, two minutes. And no one. One once. Can you guys hear Mr. Burns all right? Yes, okay. Yeah. Quiet crowd. No one wants to come up and say anything? <laughs> Two minutes? No. We put them to sleep. Wow. Okay. Don't want to get out of here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, new business. Appointments. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the appointment of director of curriculum and instruction and staff development intern Kelly Morgan LaRosa be extended through June 30th, 2014. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. And Kelly is here tonight in the blue. Did you get your ankle wrapped? <laughs> um, she, she twisted her ankle and Mrs. Cott performed first aid, so we appreciate that, <laughs> Mrs. Scott. But Kelly, you look wonderful, even Stella, you look like you're in pain, but um, it, Kelly's done a wonderful job so, so far, and we're thrilled to have you stay, and thank you. Uh, next motion, I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the appointment of long-term substitute teacher, Ashley Mason, be extended through June 30th, 2014. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Is Ashley here? Okay. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, upon successfully completing her probationary period, Allison Pico be granted tenure as a mathematics teacher effective January 31st, 2014. Second. Discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions, motion carries. Allison is here. Allison is here. Congratulations, Congratulations. Allison. Congratulations. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent upon successfully completing her probationary period, Catherine Musso be granted tenure as a special education teacher effective February 3rd, 2014. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions, motion carries. Is Katie here? Yes. There's Katie. There she is. Congratulations, Katie. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Claire Flynn, who was initially certified in childhood education B2 and 1 through 6, and students with disabilities 1 through 6, be appointed as a point six FTE special education. You missed five. Right. We'll five. Well, I can go back. Um, special education teacher effective January 13th, 2014 through June 30th, 2014. Salary is based upon ETA contract master's step one. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Is Claire here tonight? Congratulations, Claire. Welcome. Uh, I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the hours for social worker Helen Nab be increased by 0.29 to 
to 0.89 FTE effective December 16th, 2013 due to grant increases. Second. Discussion, I have a question. Is this just for the year? That, that is exactly what I was going to say in the question. Since it is a grant, it only goes through the end of the school year. Okay, and so then should we move back to it? Unless it's continuing in next year's grant, correct. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the internal auditor's transportation audit be accept accepted as presented. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Well, real quick, y'all had an auditor's meeting this morning and discussed it. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, I don't know if you have any uh, you want to say. <coughs> Tom, do you have an extra one? I have a Well, the audit committee met this morning and received the full report from the auditors uh, on the transportation department. And um, there were no real major poor findings in there. There were just processes that they recommended to tighten up the process, uh, just in terms of some record keeping and looking at our inventory systems, uh, looking at potentially uh, a electronic system of doing that more than just Excel, um, uh, looking at our fueling system and making sure that um, any potential for um, theft is not there, not saying there is in any way, shape, or form. That's an auditor's job just to look at any of the weaknesses. Um, looking at payroll and time punches and making sure that everyone's punching in at the right time, punching out at the right time, um, but no major bad findings, just recommendations of how to make our process better. And to tighten it up. And, to tighten it up. and many of those, as the auditor said this morning, have already been rectified by the sheer fact that our transportation supervisor, who was shared last year, is here full-time this year. So that did resolve some of them. Others we continue to work on. Fair synopsis? In time on the... Yes. Gas mileage? Yes. We were, when is that changing? We are changing our system. Is it at the end of the year we're doing the upgrade, Rose? Yes. Um, we are required, We uh, our fuel system is uh, requiring us to do an upgrade. One of the findings that the auditors looked at was saying that our current system does not require a mileage in at, or any mileage reading whatsoever when fueling. And again, that just increases the potential for problems. And so one of their findings was that you definitely want to take care of that right away. Fortunately for us, the upgrade is going to actually require that, um, but they had a couple other recommendations, particularly on the f uh, fuel, to make sure that that's as tight as possible. And the committee recommends that the board accept the report. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the donation of the Pro Tools Music Sequencing Program for use with the school musical valued at $295 be accepted from the Eden Elementary Drama Club. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the revised 2013-2014 school calendar be approved. Second. Discussion? Oh, yes. <laughs> Why would we have to revise the calendar? <laughs> Why would we have to revise the calendar? I have to laugh because in early December, on a daily basis, my husband would say, are you really sure you know how to close school if you have to? Um, I can assure you I know how to close school. Um, I, I could not do it alone, though. I, I, I have a wonderful team that, that helps us close in the, in the quickest and most efficient fashion that we can. Rose gets on to the news channels and works hard with some of the channels, but gets it on the radio and gets it on the news. Lucinda gets it on our website. 
Um, and I push out the Global Connect unless you were one of those people when um, your cell phones wouldn't accept it, when our winds were gusting at 50, 60 miles an hour. For the most part, we will try to make the phone call to close school as early as possible. As you can see on some of them, we actually closed the night before because it helps with child care and it helps with us because for the most part, Rose is on the road by quarter after four. She's calling me at quarter after four telling me what the roads look like and if we can avoid all of that, if it's a dangerous situation, then we want to do that for our bus drivers as well. On one of those days that we did have a snow day, though, we actually had buses up on the Boston Ridge letting Rose and I know what it looked like. That would have been the Monday that we closed early. And I know that some people might say, well, if you know the weather's going to get poor or bad later in the day, then why do you go in at all? Um, bringing students in for attendance when it's safe, recognizing that you can release early um, counts as an attendance day for us. So we figured that we would be okay till about 11.30 or 12. We called the junior senior high school at 12.40 and they dismissed so that we could turn the buses around and get back. It's very different than a school district that has one run. We have two. So sometimes we actually have to have the junior senior high school dismiss earlier than, than the weather actually even predicts just simply because we want to make sure we get the elementary, that, that the buses get back in time because we know it's going to take us longer to get the elementary home in time. That particular day that we dismissed everybody early, it's because we knew that the weather was deteriorating earlier than we wanted it to. We've now used five snow days. I can't tell you the last time that Eden used five snow days. You might know. Um, we were budgeted for five, and we used all five. So if this were April, I'd say it's no problem, but it's January. Um, and when that lake decides to unfreeze, I suspect that we will have at least one or two more. The recommendation that I'm making to the board is for us to be proactive and to do two half day or AM student attendance days, one on February 14th and one on March 21st. Those were full staff days. Eden is very lucky that we do have staff days. We would bring these two days back in count them as attendance days. Therefore, if we only had two more snow days, we would then be equal. If in fact we find ourselves in March needing another one, then we'll have some more conversation about where we want to go. Um, I'd love to stay away from vacations because that's the most expensive one to bring back and the most difficult one to staff, obviously. But we do have some time uh, to watch what Mother Nature decides to do to us. I could be wrong on my dates on this because I've been floating from meeting to meeting, but I do believe that there is also a proposal um, to adopt May 16th as a Raiders Respond Day rather than May 19th because of the assessments that are starting on the 20th. So I would put that into the calendar as well, even though it's not listed in the enclosure. Did I miss anything on that? We're good? Okay. I, I would say that we field an awful lot of phone calls, and rightly so, when it comes to snow days. Um, we push for snow days on student safety first always. If we have 10 snow days, then we have 10 snow days. I make the best decision I can. Am I always right? No. Um, I pay for it, <laughs> so you know. Um, but student safety comes first and it is a collective decision and we do watch what's happening around us. If I feel like on that Tuesday that there were driving bans that we couldn't staff the district, even though we didn't expect bad weather, we're going to do that too. Our board policy right now states that if in fact we're closed, that that's closed for everything. And you'll hear me on the Global Connect say this involves practices, this involves tournaments, this involves everything. It's a very difficult thing when the weather starts to become nice at noon, but this is a policy that we believe is important. If it's not good enough for academics, then we shouldn't be coming in for anything and risking the safety of students. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, library books be declared excess and disposed of as the district deems necessary. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the following vehicles be surplus due to decay of body and floor sills. Uh, these vehicles can no longer meet uh, New York State DOT inspection qualifications. Uh, I'm just going to give the numbers. 163, 165, 166, 168, 170, 174, 175, and 8. Bingo. Second. 
discussion. Um, with us accessing all these buses, what's then the plan for us going forward? Um, in your addendum, you actually do have a no obligation contract for you guys to approve if you want from Matthew's uh, bus for two buses to for us to use at no charge to the district this year uh, with the hope that we are going to be going through a bus proposition uh, with the budget vote this year if whether it happens or not again we're under no obligation to purchase the buses, pay anything for those buses. If a bus proposition does go through, we are under no obligation to um, pay anything back from this year. There's no cost to that whatsoever. The other thing is we're surplusing eight. Yes. And we're only getting two? That's correct. How many do we, Rose, do we need eight? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I don't need eight at this time. Okay, that's all I want to know. She'll, she'll I, need I, more than two I over the next couple years. I, I do need you. You can do with two this year. More than two would be helpful. More than two would be very good because at this point, if I have a breakdown and Marissa has sports, um, I will cut that out. It'll be challenging to get the sports out. Because right now I have no spare buses. What we're doing is trying to weigh um, the fiscal responsibility mm -hmm. for taxpayers versus fulfilling all the needs at once. So two is a reasonable number to get us started. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the teacher early retirement incentive be approved. Second it. Discussion? I, I'd like to discuss that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I've come to, the appreciate, to appreciate more and more the value of our teaching staff. They're highly educated, they're mentally flexible, and they have quite a few emotional demands and very creative. We have had some very successful students graduate from Eden, and it is still a coveted place to live and raise a family. In the economic climate, the enrollment dropping, we are, changed, we are challenged with what I believe is a morally wrong financially, financial incentive to any school staff. In the real world, you make a life change. Things are uncertain, scary, unnerving. It's like jumping off or falling off a high cliff. Please do not use the children's education funds for your launching pad. <clears throat> this draws into our moral character we are preaching about that's plastered all over our walls. <clears throat> Do not use our children's funds that the community rightfully owns. If there were $1 million in our coffers, I still believe incentivizing uh, the, the staff um, financial retirement is the wrong choice to do. The teachers earned and the community paid honest wages. The teachers earned and the community paid honest vacations. The teachers earned and the community paid great health care. The teachers earned and the community paid a decent retirement. Should the board majority decide to go ahead with the financial incentive, I challenge any teacher who accepts that incentive to give it back, give it back to the students and the community where I feel it belongs. Establish a scholarship of, uh, <clears throat> of, uh, um, of a student that you cherish, donate to a specific curriculum, sponsor a bus, or an activity such as after school transportation. <clears throat> or maybe the sports insurance that we had to drop. Donate to a special part, a piece of the sports equipment. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if this is um, 
approved and voted on. Is this a one-time deal or is this multi-year? We expect it to do this every year to, in order to have retirements? I'll, I'll answer that for you. The best that I can tell you right now is that this in my research is the first time that an incentive has been offered. Um, I do not anticipate an incentive coming up again um, for a while. Um, of course, right now, I believe it's the best move for us as a district. So I, I, I wouldn't be bringing it forward to you on a continual basis year to year. I would think one of the goals of this would be to achieve some cost savings. Is that one of the reasons that's behind this, ultimately? You know, Les, I'm going to let Tom answer that part, but I'm going to come into this one right here, is that um, it's, it's been a struggle over the course of the past couple of years with the diminishing funds coming in from the state. And um, what I would say to you is, is that we have a crew of, of teachers, whether they taught for a while or they're brand new, that are just really, really eager to teach. And so, um, coupled with what Tom might say in terms of a, of a cost savings to the district, um, I believe that um, that also is something to consider. I understand that it's, that, that it's a cost savings, and I understand, and I've heard the story, if you have an $80,000 teacher and you bring in a $40,000 teacher, we're going to save $40,000. But we're going to save 30000 not 40. And it is a moral issue, in my opinion. Barbara answered my question. Yes, there would be a cost savings. Um, it wouldn't be a straight $40,000 savings on an $80,000 teacher, because what you need to look at are a couple factors. Um, there, obviously, the replacement costs, um, the health care for the current teacher versus the health care and the other benefits for the new teacher, they're not going to be the exact same level. Um, the, un well, the unemployment insurance, if that person were to get a job elsewhere, the labor laws are such that your last employer is also on the hook as well, so you have to calculate that into savings. So it's not just a straight 40000 slash 30000 Actually, we'll still be paying the, the insurance on the retired teacher and bringing in a, another insurance for the new teacher also. So uh, it looks like that 40000 is back down to 20000 And then also you have to add on top of that their accrued vacation and the other sick time that you would have to pay out as well. You have to pay that. that is correct, but we already have accounted for that. And, and no matter when someone actually retires, we actually have Whether accounted for that. Whether there was an incentive or not. Mm -hmm. Correct. And ultimately, it's any of the teachers choice to take this, correct? I mean, there's no pressure going on with any teachers, yes? No. no. I mean, no. they can retire regardless of whether it's an incentive or not. I mean, it's, it's an incentive, Patty. It's okay. It's incentivizes them. So it's a choice, but it's a, a monetary choice that they make, so. We do put parameters on it. Yeah, we do. So it's not like anybody can choose to. We would Correct. put a, a parameter. If they're at that point. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So the bottom line, Tom, then, this would save the district money. It, it would definitely save the district money. There's no doubt about it. It just depends on how many people take it is more savings. Obviously, mm -hmm. the more people take it, the more money the district is actually going to save. That, that's correct. There's no doubt about that. And another question I have is, do we have teachers that are doing making 60000 And so that would lighten up the incentive. Or are they only the highest paying teachers? Because that's what you really want to save is the, the high cost. Well, the incentive is definitely targeted towards um, the group of full-time teachers. And what, what if a teacher that's can retire and they're only making 60? Well, I mean, it's... You We're gotta, not going to get the full benefits is where I'm going with this. I'll say theoretically. I'm not going to say an actually. If someone were making 60000 or 50000 you're absolutely correct, we would not make as much. What we actually did is looked at each teacher's salary to figure out the exact what the difference would be. So we, we actually did that math. But if we had a large participation, I mean, it could also be a brain drain on our organization, meaning that skilled and uh, teachers walking out the door. No, get new ones in. <laughs> 
that, you know, it, it's an interesting point, though, that Mr. Breeden pokes up, because I, I think that there's even some close schools to us where they had an excess of staff and offered a teacher incentive where there was a large number of teachers who retired. And in that particular case, there are there's a culture and traditions, and, and, and we value teachers that have taught for many years and taught here. So there's no doubt that, that having teachers retire, even if it's one, you lose a lot. So I, I would say absolutely, Mr. Breeden. There's also only a select number of teachers that will be eligible for this. Yes. It, it's not half of our staff, I can assure you. <coughs> it's not. Anyone else? I, I would just say I, I'm sympathetic to Mr. Breeden's point. I don't think it's necessarily good policy to offer these on a recurring basis. So if this is a one-time thing that's not gonna be offered again, I would support it on that basis. But if anybody's thinking this is gonna be recurring and happening again at some point in the future, I would not support it. So I'll support this now, but I'm not gonna support it again in the future. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed. Abstentions? Motion carries. Aren't you good? Yeah, I see you got that. No. No. She doesn't look up, so I'm watching. She's listening. Normally, they can always hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to say I'm loud? Come on. All set? Yep. Okay. I, I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent. Title One, Title Two A, Six Eleven, Six Nineteen, and UPK grants be accepted. Second. Discussion. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, you know, what the grants are and all that. Um, every year, the districts are supposed to approve the grant funds they actually receive any money that comes into the district. Uh, so when you're taking a look at the grants, Title uh, One and Two A center around the No Child Left Behind Act. Um, the 611 and 619 grants are the IDEA grants, which are uh, the special education grants. Uh, the 611 are for school age children, 619 is for preschool children, and the UPK grant for universal pre kindergarten. It's just a traditional, you, you'll see this Did every we do year. This in the um, you, we're supposed to do it every year. It's <laughs> creative way of saying no. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent that 2013-2014 appropriations be increased by $1,349.50 to $25,739,881.38. $881.38 to account for increased revenues. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the 2013-2014 appropriations be increased by $1,323.50 to $25,741,204.88 to account for increased revenues. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the standard workday and reporting resolution for the treasurer be approved as presented. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Discussion was just say this is an annual thing we do. That's, I mean, it's just standard. So. Okay, this is the addendum, uh, item M. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education authorizes the use of two loaner buses Second. by I'm not by Matthews Buses Incorporated at no cost to the district until June 30th, 2014. There is no obligation by the district to purchase these buses at the expiration of the time period. Second. Discussion. I have one question. Is the Matthews Bus Incorporated sign coming off those buses while we take the lead. No. So are we even allowed to have a company like that on the side of a bus? Yes. 
Um, BOT has told us what has to be on there. It has to be operated by a team that the goal is to take care of. So everything is on there according to BOT stuff. I do have a question. Where's Matthews located at? The one that we deal with is Dansville. All the way over in Dansville? Mm -hmm. So if we hired them on, would we have to ship the buses over there, or do they have to, is there a cost? That's who, that's who we buy from. No, they come to us. Okay. We don't have to go there. They, they come to us at the same way, our name. Are these new buses? Mm -hmm. No. And, and what we would say is if you guys decide to pursue the bus proposition, these would not be, even if we go with Matthews, these would not be the buses that we would be getting. Right. These are strictly loaner buses. That's it. And Matthews is who we deal are with. Are these buses for sale, though? Used buses? Yeah, these buses are loaners. They, they allow other school districts to use. Oh. It's like they... The question is, tell me you're going to your car dealer. Yeah. <laughs> now, these... So it's two buses. Are two buses now carrying two routes of kids home? Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Because like two be different runs? Because you saw some combining of routes a couple times. Correct. So Rose, like can you still. That? So the question is, 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 are we combining routes now because we're short on buses, or was there another reason, and what will these two buses do for us? Does that work? Correct. Two buses, if we did purchase them for next year, would this still be a problem for next year? The same problem that we're having now? Yeah, we won't have stairs. Have so next year we'll be need to purchase more than just two buses, is what you're saying? Well, I, again, with the proposition, you have to weigh out what you would want, and again, what's fair to taxpayers. So oh, yeah, looking yeah, I at that. I realize that. that. Okay. Um, or we can just it, <laughs> well, first of all, is there interest on the board of looking at a bus proposition? That is question one, so we can start putting figures together on that. I, think that's one option. I thought we were pretty much committed to that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Just want to make sure on that. Um, so we'll start taking a look at that. But that is the thought. We already put in for state aid. They like to know if you are planning or thinking of buying buses next year, what you would be looking at. Uh, we had put in for the two just for that very thought. Doesn't mean we can't change, but they'd like to have a, an idea as to what you're actually gonna be doing. So, right. would it be fair to say that we could also look at a bus proposition of three? Um, we could look at how we structure. We actually put, I think, like two large, one mini. Okay. Right, right now, it's two large, one small. Thank you. <laughs> all right, it'll be four wheel drive all buses, right? All now. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Then I will leave the contract with Barb for you to sign. Um, okay. I move that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the district code of conduct be approved as revised. Second. All in favor? Or I got aye. a question. Discussion? Hold on. Sure. Now, looking at that information, really it was just adding more drugs and paraphernalia to... It was adding the e-cigarettes. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. all right. We had no idea what they were last year. <laughs> okay, now we do. Okay, uh, all right. Now we have a store in town. Now yeah, we, we have some. Okay. All right, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Mm 
Is Mr. Cervoni here? And Mrs. McKenna's, I can't see you, I'm sorry. All I would ask on that is that we make sure that our parents and students are aware of the change in the conduct code. Okay, uh, that would include Mr. Grafts too. I'm hoping not Mrs. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> you take care of that, Mrs. Carter. <laughs> Uh, information and proposals. Administration. Do we have any? Yeah. Oh, you're going right to me? Okay. Oh, yep. Business okay. report. A couple things. Um, for me, I will keep it short and sweet. Budget advisory team um, met tonight. We had our first presentation, uh, fiscal presentations from Rose Court for transportation. And she did a fine job, yeah, thank you very much. Um, what we did find out in this forum, the hour goes very quickly. So we'll be looking at the best way as we're going forward to be able to fit in multiple presentations within the hour period so we can begin the uh, board meeting on time. Uh, what I'm actually pre uh, presenting right now is we revised the budget advisory team schedule slightly, which we passed out at the meeting. Um, and that is weather related, that we had in December. And what you're getting now is, in addition to that, the revised administrative timeline for when they have to get in all their information for the budget process as well. So you got that here as well. Uh, next, I had on there a uh, minimum wage increase. As of January 1st, the minimum wage increased to $8 per hour. Um, the government has gone overboard um, with that one. I'm sorry, that was a political comment on my, on my side, sorry. Um, they will also increase it over the next two years. It did actually affect just not our permanent employees, but our substitutes, substitute monitors and cleaners. They were just under eight, so they now will go to eight. You guys don't need to vote on it because it's better law, but just as an informational piece for you guys to know. Um, do, do you know how much that uh, increased the budget? For our subs, it, well, no, because it depends on how much we use them. Right. So, no, I, I don't know what the top Okay. Um, and finally, I just wanted to let the board know, um, we were at a BOCES meeting last week, and BOCES, much like any other school district, has the potential to have a capital project. Um, the BOCES that we deal with, they have aging facilities, just like here. Um, so they're looking at making repairs to those facilities and having a potential capital project. Um, what they're looking at for next year is a small capital project just to get them through with some of the necessary repairs. What does that mean for us? That basically means for next year, we get to increase our BOCES budget for that alone by $42,000. So it's no choice. Yeah, we, and that one we, we do have no choice. They are looking at going forward with a larger proposition, whether it's one big one, whether it's multiple small ones, um, and they're looking at, there are, I believe, 27 school districts in our BOCES, and there are a couple ways they can actually do this. They can get every school district to agree on it. It is the cheapest way for them to do that. Um, or they can go other routes that don't require full agreement which are more expensive, and then we would have no choice. They're weighing those options. I have no more to tell you at this point other than in our budget for next year, we already need to put in $42,000. There, we don't have the choice. But you guys should be aware of that. Can yeah. you just elaborate on where the money goes? To, it just goes to BOCES, and we all support BOCES. Is that correct, right? correct. Our, our students go to Laguitas or Carrier <laughs> Center, East Aurora, and there's one additional site too, and I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, I believe it's Orange State. That's not for Potter on this one. Um, thank you. Yeah, thanks, um, So for for it's, I mean, our students are going there. It's it's an extension, basically, of the services they're getting here. So we would expect them to have good facilities here. We also would expect them to have good facilities there. Um, so every school district kicks in to to do that. Okay. And I have no other bad news tonight. That's what it. What about you had a Affordable Care Act? Affordable Care Act. Um, really, no updates tonight. I leave it on every time, but not. Okay. Tonight. I know this isn't on the agenda, but but if you could just take a moment just to share on sure. this timeline, 
what your hopes are with this timeline of getting to a, a budget. Yep. Okay, so going over this timeline, looking at what we're at right now, so we'll just go over this timeline. Uh, we're at the 15th um, today. On uh, the 20th, what we are asking is for each department to have their budget in into the system. Now, the 20th is Martin Luther King Day. We know that may actually push out another day or two. So, um, but we need the budgets loaded by next week. Um, we will then begin the conversations between the business office and the superintendent with each of the departments uh, on their budgets. Uh, we've already <coughs> begun that process informally, um, but we're really gonna begin in earnest on February 23rd, beginning to look at the staffing. Um, it, right, so what we're doing here from the staffing is again K-12. What we as administrative team have already been doing are looking at what the staffing needs and wishes are going to be for next year. Um, once we have all of those needs and wishes done, from there then is what can we do? So what do we want? What's realistic? Um, what's in the best interest for students? Um, and what's in the best interest for taxpayers? And then start working from there. Uh, February 7th, we we're actually looking to have the first draft into uh, the superintendent. Uh, we have a presentation to the budget advisory team in February. Uh, the second draft would be due later in February. Um, we also will have a community forum. Anyone out in the community who wants to join the budget advisory team on February 26th after the official meeting itself, there is a community forum that will follow so you have a chance to pub uh, publicly comment on what you're seeing on the budget, what is important to you. So I, I encourage everybody here to come out and join for that. Uh, March 5th, another budget advisory work session with the third draft that's actually due. March 15th, another uh, budget workshop. Also March 15th, that will be the second and final. I believe March 15th is a Saturday. If I'm not mistaken, we have not set a time yet for that, but we wanna give people the choice of having um, both a weekday and a weekend. So if you can't make one community forum, we, we highly encourage you to come out for the second one. We're really trying to make an effort with bringing the community involved involvement uh, increasing this year. Um, and, and you guys had community forums last year, so you did as well. We're just looking to expand it with the budget advisory team and continued community forums. Yes. Meet right here then. Um, here? That's that's what we would be looking at. As long as there's nothing already <coughs> scheduled here, we'll have to double check on that. But that's what we'd be looking at. April eighth, what we are looking at, um, the budget has to be sent in and adopted no later than April twenty fifth. So we would be looking at the April eighth uh, meeting for the board to adopt the budget. If they didn't? Would they have up to the 25th? Then they'd have to have a special meeting. They would have to have a special meeting if we do not do that. Uh, May 6th, we'll have a budget hearing and the vote on May 20th. May 6th, I have May 8th. Nope. Uh, okay, I'll double check on, on that hearing date. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Okay. I'd, I would add, though, that Tom and I have started a conversation about actually doing some outreach presentations to groups in the area. So whether it be senior citizens, VFW, we obviously can't go tell them to vote, but we would certainly go out and tell them what the, what the budget is and what it sounds like so that it's not all based on just a budget hearing here. I don't believe that Eden has done that in a while, so we're going to try see how it goes. If you want to host it at your home, that would be okay, too. Good. Anything else for me? No. Yeah, I'm going to go out of I'm going to go out of order on this one a little bit because I like good news. Um, and to start by stating that on the December um, board agenda, we actually had invited the football team to come so that we could congratulate them. But I'm going to read um, what was sent to me. And uh, Marissa, if I miss anything, just f please feel free to jump in, okay? The coaches of the B South Division voted the Eden Raiders as the winner of the Sportsmanship Award for the division. Garrett Stefano was awarded the Individual Award for Sportsmanship. At the Western New York Football Banquet, the Western New York High School football officials named the Eden Raiders as the number one team in Western New York football for sportsmanship. They also gave an award to Coach Tilly as the Western New York coach that displays the most sportsmanship. Um, I'd like to congratulate 
Um, Marissa is a fabulous AD, and I know that your leadership makes a big difference for all of our teams, but also Coach Tilly, Garrett DiStefano, and the entire football team. Ah, absolutely. <laughs> if you're a football member, please stand up. We want to know who you are. Excellent job. And the fact that it's for sportsmanship, to me, means more than anything. So congratulations, guys, and thank you. I'd also like to read a letter that was in your board packet. It is to Mrs. Smith. On behalf of the Eden North Collins Food Pantry, I would like to thank you and your students and staff for undertaking the recent generous donations of gifts to our pantry. This would be to both GLP and the elementary school. As always, I am so impressed with the amount and variety. It will help to make Christmas a little brighter for our clients. Currently, we serve 126 families from the five local communities twice a month. We are a 501c3 organization which means that they are a not-for-profit with no paid employees. We've been in operation at our present location since 2007. Thank you again for your generous response. You have demonstrated the true meaning of Christmas. May God bless each of you and your families with a happy and a healthy 2014. My understanding is that this has been going on for years and it was spearheaded by our nurses. And, and I, just because I haven't been here that long, but I know that Lauren and, and Mark have, if you could just take, take a moment to just talk about what you do, what the nurses do. Mr. Graff, did she leave anything out since uh, the first time you saw it? That's the first time I saw it. Yeah. It was yeah. every day we were filling the table and emptying it, and the next day would be filled with just day after day after day. So Very nice. Pretty impressive. So thanks to everybody who contributed to that. Thank you. The other item that's on the agenda for me, um, I would come back to conversations that have occurred over the past, I don't know how long I've been here, eight or nine months it seems, um, to to a potential capital project and what is it that we as a district need to look at. Um, in all the research that I've done and the conversations that I've had with community members and staff members um, and students, um, there is no doubt that the need for conversation is there. Uh, depending on who you're speaking to, you get a different opinion, which I would expect in a community of any school, but especially in Eden, where it has such long-standing tradition and cultures. Uh, what I would also say is that because we do have the uh, clear trend of a declining enrollment, that that need to um, really take a look at where we're going to end up um, five or ten years from now becomes ever so much more present for us. It also is no doubt um, that educators are hearing so much more of a push for um, something new in education to take a look at adjacent schools and see how is it that we can be uh, a little more prudent with what we do with our facilities. I know when I first started teaching in the 1970s um, and 80s, there was um, a push for distance learning. Um, obviously, that's coming back. It looks a lot different. Um, but how else can we share services? That Central New York is much farther ahead than we are in terms of sharing services. We do have some. Some are laws that 
get in our way um, that are slowly changing. And so that's also very encouraging to us. But I would anticipate in the course of the next five to 10 years, a really big push by, the, by state ed and the state of New York government to see how else school districts can share services and be uh, more prudent, whether that is picking up students on the way to Carrier, you know, because we're passing through another district, or taking a look at courses that are offered in between different districts. My recommendation um, to the Board of Education is, is that um, we bring together what I would call a, a needs assessment committee, which would be um, people from the community, um, some of our students who are interested in this, and people from our school to help us draw up um, a proposal to you as a Board of Education to look forward to bringing on either what I call a CM or a construction management team or an architectural firm to take a look at the facility needs now and in the future for Eden. But in addition to that, to taking a look at a needs assessment from an academic perspective. We are a very unusual district in that we have three buildings that are on one contiguous campus. Um, we are also in a position where in the next 10 years we could see a spike in our enrollment as opposed to a decline. Certainly that has happened in the past, but we are also um, very unusual in that we produce our own power and that power runs right under one of the buildings that we've had so much conversation about. And in addition to that, um, in the last capital project, there wasn't a lot of money that was put into GLP because there was a question about what to do. And so um, I would like to marry three things in this RFP. One would be with financial advisement, um, obviously with Tom. Uh, secondly would be academic planning for long term. Part of that might be a middle school concept. Part of it might be bringing sixth grade up here. Some of it might be taking a look at, um, obviously, that conversation that's coming up about mandatory full-time UPK. Um, and what does that mean to us? And what does it mean to GLP to possibly moving offices around and seeing if there's some space that we can utilize better? If, in fact, our numbers are becoming smaller and there is room in another building, but we need more space up here for something, would it make more sense for the business and district offices to move? And in addition to that, bringing in some people who understand what it means that a gas line runs right underneath the building, what it means that there's an asbestos at GLP, and what it means that we're not upgrading on our technology. Boy, I wish you could tape this so I could remember what I said, Mrs. Thomas Sewell. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> okay. Because I'm gonna want to hear it again. No, I won't, trust me. Um, so I think because it is so vast and it's so big and it's so really important to us that this isn't something that we should do alone without some people who have done it before in other districts. And I would be very comfortable working with this needs assessment committee to make a recommendation to you as an advisement committee as to um, which firm to bring on for a needs assessment and then possibly a pre-referendum. The addition to that is that right now, Tom, you help me if I'm wrong on this one, but the capital reserve that we have um, has about $400 in it. That's correct. We have a capital reserve about 400000 It was established in October, of, uh, not October, in 2007, um, but it was for very specific purposes. Uh, we would have to check right now. My read of it is that we were not able to use it for pre-referendum services. Of course, I didn't like that answer. <laughs> I didn't like that answer from Mr. Murphy at all, but I think it's fair to say that um, that we would not be able to reduce the the footprint on our um, the amount of money that we would need in order to do anything for a capital project with four hundred and eight dollars if that's what we have. So we we really have to give some very strong consideration from a financial perspective about what we're looking at, what we need, and where we need to be, um, and what we need to do with any of our our funds for our taxpayers. So. Um, my hope is that by the February or March board meeting that we would bring an RFP to you um, to take a look at, um, and this needs assessment committee would already be up and running. 
The concept would be is that once we have that, that another committee may join in or combine with it to then be, be working with all of these from the transportation department to the contiguous campus to um, whether we keep GLP open or we don't and then also the academic piece with the, the um, sixth grade at the elementary school versus a middle school model or a junior senior high school. So we would be running in a number of different directions for you. Now, what was that 400,000 initially? That 400,000 could have been set up for some of the repairs that took place in GLP. We did get Excel aid on that project, um, so we didn't need to use that. But when you look at the wording for it, again, it says act for actual improvements. It's very specific in the wording. It is a 10-year capital um, reserve that has been set up for the district. Um, but the way that it was put forth to the voters, it says it could be used for, um, again, the actual improvements themselves. And it, the wording does not give leeway for the pre-referendum, not actual construction, because it is actually worded as construction. So those beginning expenses aren't part of that. Okay, so it could be used for technology. No, um, you know what, I have the wording right here. How about that? And it's just for GLP? No, it is set up district wide. You may have it may have been started with that intent for repairs that were needed there. Uh, this is money that's left over so from the last well as the project. Uh, it's money that we have put away with any additional monies we'd add at the end of any year that we funded with uh, fund balance. So let's just Six see. Okay, resolved that the Board of Education, the Board of the Eden Central School District, the district, is hereby authorized to establish a capital reserve fund pursuant to Section 3651 of the Education Law of the State of New York, the fund, that the fund shall be known as the Capital Reserve Fund 2007 of the district, that the fund shall be established for the purpose of funding the construction, reconstruction, addition to, renovation, alterations and improvements of district buildings, facilities, grounds, and real property, including the acquisition of original furnishings, equipment, machinery, and apparatus, uh, apparatus required in connection therewith, that the ultimate amount of such funds shall be not greater than one million plus interest earned thereon, that the probable term of the fund shall not be longer than 10 years, that the sources of the monies for the fund shall be A, amounts from budgetary appropriations from time to time, B, amounts from unappropriated fund balance as designated by the Board of Education from time to time, and C, to the extent specifically directed by the Board of Education. State aid received as reimbursement for expenditures by the district in connection with district capital improvements and for expenditures from the fund, and D, such other sources that the Board or the voters of the district may direct, all as permitted by law. So when you look at this, it is very specific in what you can actually spend it on. Um, nowhere in there does it mention pre-referendum, architects, construction management, but the actual hard costs of doing that or the furnishings that go along with the hard costs of the construction. So if we wanted to use that money, would we have to take that to the voters? To you, for use of it, you yes. would have to go to the voters to use it, correct. And we, where then could we spend it? So let's just say we uh, wanted to have an improvement at GLP, uh, add on a wing somewhere and it was gonna cost less than $400,000. We could go to the voters now, say we wanna use the capital reserve of the 400,000 uh, 400, to do that. Um, unfortunately, in today's market, 400,000, it's not gonna get us much. If we're really gonna do a major improvement, that 400,000, sad to say, is just a drop in the bucket. You can use part of that money towards it, but you would have to have a larger referendum but if go we out. we took it to the voters and moved it, could we move it into purchasing of technology? Or does it stay? No, no, you could not do that. Still stay. It still it, it is for capital okay. expenditure purposes. And if you don't use it for that purposes, you'd have to give it back to the voters. Yes? Tom, how, how does that work with the, with the New York State as far as um, them matching it? Or what's the? The state aid reimbursement. How does that work? You have to have a, um, a project on file and approved by the state. 
and then once that project is actually completed based on your um, ratio for building aid ratio you would be reimbursed once a project is done but it would have to be a project on file with them and approved so I'm going to prompt him to say what I know that he told me yesterday so you're better off to go with smaller projects um, okay okay really what we're looking at and it's a good point that you actually make the district at looking at a potential new project can go one of two ways and I'm not referring to this 400,000 that's here but if we're looking forward a new project you can do a large project or you can do multiple small projects whichever way you go one thing that has changed from previous years is the funding mechanism from the state for the reimbursement now funding comes back once the project is complete the paperwork is into the state and it's finalized so when we take out when we go to vote with the voters to say we want to fund 5 10 15 25 million whatever the case and we take on debt for that we have to manage those payments every year well until it's done, well, until it's done. Um, but we get nothing back until the project itself is completed so there will be a period of years where we the district will be putting the money out directly and not getting reimbursement for the state so many districts now have chosen to go the route we just had this discussion last week at BOCES when they were talking about the capital project um, as now many business officials are chunking it into smaller projects so if you want to do a 20 million dollar project so you would do four five million dollar ones so once the first one's done then you go to the second one so that way that five million dollar project is completed the aid starts rolling in from that project before you start your next one and take on the debt for the next one it's just better debt management mm -hmm. so does that answer the question does that answer your question you were prompting me for but your question my question was does the state match it uh yes and they match every no nope, not 100 percent. they look at the scope of the project and they will tell you what that reimbursement rate is going to be so we will put together a project for them if that is what we decide to do submit it to the state they will come back and let us know what our reimbursement rate is going to be they lean towards the, well, we, we were talking about this before isn't it if you have they always want to see sports in it or they always want what do they always want to see no they don't they don't necessarily want to see sports the the reality of a uh, many um proposals is that sports are included because many communities want to see sports and it's it's really something that many communities value and it's an incentive for the project okay. but not from the state perspective per se okay. not from the state. no from a voter perspective okay other questions no thank you okay, okay. i'm done all right paul um I had the honor of going to the uh, New York State School Board Association, and Barb was there. So, Barb, if you have anything to add to this, um, one of the things that I did when I was at the uh, School Board Association is I was the voting delegate for Eden and for this area. I have handed out to all the board members a copy of the resolutions that were adopted, and I'm not going to go through every one of them but I'm just going to highlight some of them. Uh, a lot of the districts are in the same place that we are. They, uh, there was one of the resolutions was the, um, to resolve that the New York State School Board Association wants uh, support from New York State for unfunded or underfunded mandate programs. Um, that was one of them that, uh, you know, basically New York State coming down with all these mandates and aren't funding them. All the districts are in the same place. Um, aid for the loss due to the tax base. Uh, tax bases are, are shrinking. Um, again, a lot of districts are in the same place. I got a chance to talk to a lot of different board members while I was at this conference, and they're struggling with the same things that we're struggling with. Decreased enrollment, uh, lower tax bases, um, one of the other resolutions that was big uh, at this vote was aid for school board, uh, aid for school safety, um, trying to get more money to make the schools safer because of all these events that have been happening across the state. Um, one of the resolutions that was not initially to be voted on but was brought up at the meeting that I found very interesting was that 
um, if somebody calls a school and makes a threat that there's a bomb in the building, that actually is a felony. But if you call and make a threat that there is a firearm in the building, that is not. And one of the districts had that happen several times where the same individual, and they knew who it was, was calling the school and stating that there was somebody in the building that had firearms and they could not really press very um, substantial charges against this individual because it was that there was a firearm and not that there was an explosive device. So the school board association did uh, do a resolution to New York State to make that the same penalty as if you called up having to do with uh, an explosive device in the building, which was kind of an, interest, an interesting twist. Um, also attended a, a meeting with Commissioner King. Um, you've probably all seen in the news, the meeting was very similar to that. People were very <laughs> opposed to how things were done as far as the Common Core and about the mandated testing. Um, so that was um, an interesting meeting. Um, got a lot of information about potential buses. Um, that was one of the vendors that I talked to. Barb and I talked to a vendor having to do with uh, possible changes to school lunches and um, savings that could potentially be there and that this vendor that we talked to would come in and actually do a um, audit to see if we could save money by using their resources. Uh, there were quite a few architects that were there and I got a chance to talk to several of them uh, about their, you know, different uh, ideas and different ways that they, um, you know, uh, approach school districts with uh, possible improvements. Uh, attended a lot of the conferences this year were based again on school safety and how you can improve your school safety and uh, the needs um, you know to take a look at you know how things are done at the school was there for about two and a half days there's did, was there a conversation on the grants I know that there was a resolution on the lengthening of the school day that you recall um, yes, it's on the second page. But was there conversation <laughs> regarding that, or did it just simply go through? It, a lot of these things, uh, this was the first time I was a delegate, and it was kind of an interesting experience because uh, there wasn't a lot of conversation on a lot of these because the resolutions have to be to the school board association so far in advance that, you know, any discussion and stuff is done before. yeah and and it's just you know especially with that many delegates there it's just a they're just oh, looking for the vote right okay. okay here it is right here additional state aid for increase in school day or school year resolve that the new york state school board association support legislation providing additional state aid inclusive of special grants for all school districts to increase the length of their school day or school year or restructure of their school instructional year to create year-round instruction. I hope we don't hear this that it's a rumor that we're going to make it year-round. We're just taught, we just have mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it. Yeah, I you mentioned, mentioned it. Barb. <laughs> Is there anything, Paul, on uh, mergers? I mean, I know the last year's one, there was a, a session on um, districts merging and- uh, I did not attend that session, but there was a session. I did talk to some of the school board members that were there and, uh, you know, they're waiting to see how some of these districts that are trying it. And I, matter of fact, one of the ones in the local area just Chief went up Waga. for vote. And it went down. That, and oh, Westfield that went down? down. I can't think of one lately that has been passed. I just I can't think of so one. So the Chictawago study went down. Um, I don't I don't have the details on what happened with the Chictawago study, but I do know that their their entire hope was try to balance out the amount of taxes that they're able to um, levy to the businesses. And I know it's on a stall. I don't I don't know the details of it at all and there was one done in the southern tier that's where the brockton westfield that one definitely voted. went down that went down it yeah. is all about community um 
a community presence. Identity. identity, thank you, that's what I couldn't get to. It's about community identity, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to ask with anything? I, I went to the, um, the state school board, um, what's it called again? Convention. Convention. And one that really sticks in my mind was last year I went and they, I did intentionally want to get on the school board at Eden because I thought that North Collins should be brought together with Eden. And when I sat down and listened to the superintendents who have tried and tried and tried to bring schools together, mm -hmm. I'd say out of 100, you might get one. It's a, it's a very emotional, like Sandy said, very emotional um, situation and the school districts do not want to lose their identity. And in fact, the town of Wyoming, um, they have 200 students. They used to have like 600. They have 200 students left. Some are, um, some are tuitioned out to Warsaw. Some are tuitioned out to um, uh, Pembroke. That's Not Pembroke, than, but. Uh, that's less than 10 kids a grade. Well, less than 20. And the superintendent is in charge of the buses. The superintendent is in charge of, and these people will not let it go. There's 200 um, community members, I mean students, and the community members will not allow their students to, to advance and move on. It's a very emotional situation, and I, I w I'm not looking for that to happen here. I, and it's not that anyone want it to. It's very difficult. <coughs> I just wanted to say to Rose and the bus drivers, doing quite a phenomenal oh, job. Absolutely. And that's all. Executive session. Uh, next meeting is Wednesday, February 12th, 7 p.m., right here. Uh, I move that the Board of Education enter executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person or persons and the superintendent's evaluation model. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thanks for coming.